Well, hi, it's Jason Gorber from ThatShelf.com, and I'm speaking to one, the iconic Jay Baruchel about BlackBerry. Congratulations on the film. We've talked about it a bunch before. Thank you very much, my friend. How are you doing? Big change. I'm good. Here in Calgary, of all places. Um, I want to talk about something that, you know, we, you and I have, have, have kept about. When you're in Tropic Thunder, you're nerding out about HD DVD and Blu-ray. And it's one of the things that I fell in love with your performance about. I guess it was an improv, but that was a format war joke. Blackberry, in funny ways, actually speaks to that. It continues to echo that about yeah. the division, about whether something is technically better or aesthetically better, and who actually decides on this stuff. I'm wondering if you could talk about your own nerdiness and your own relationship with something like BlackBerry and how the story sort of evolved with your participation in the film. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I I, um, I am a, a terribly stubborn person. That's how I'm wired. And I could come up with a bunch of reasons why. That could be a uh, Sephardic on my father's side, Irish on my mother's side, uh, not famously uh, uh, easy to get to <laughs> open-minded groups of people. Um, and so so, uh, so very bad tempers are very set in our ways. And so when I find something that works, I dig it. And that's that. And I have, uh, I don't know, the only thing I'm interested in what's new in and what people, what, you know, like the only cutting edge I'm ever interested in is uh, storytelling. You know, and so so the, so that's the only kind of cutting edge I really care about. The rest of it can all go fucking shit in the sea. Like if I've got something that works for me, then that's going to be that. And I adored the BlackBerry, right? And and I got to be, you know, this movie is not a commercial for a BlackBerry. Quite quite the opposite. Um, it just so happens I was a soft target because I adore the fucking thing, and I did. The like I I had until two years ago, literally two years ago is when the the the, the last time I used one. Um, I I only gave up because uh one by one, everyone in my family dropped like flies. Uh, BlackBerry customer flies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and all became uh, iphone users and uh and then my wife and uh my sister and my mother all ganged up on me and basically were like um you know you've got two baby nieces that you're you're missing out on all these group texts and and videos and photos and shit and so i was basically told i was being a bad uncle uh and uh, and so i i kind of had no choice i was hectored into it but um it's like one of the only times in my life where I had like a sort of sincere brand loyalty. Um, and it was like an easy one because A, I just dug it. I still dig uh, hard, proper keys uh, uh, more than touchscreen. Um, but two, uh, it, it it dovetailed perfectly with my value system of I want to use uh, a product that is developed, designed, and manufactured in my country, you know, um, and so that sounds super hokey, but it really was that. It was a product that worked, and they made it here, so why the fuck would I use anything else? Um, so I held on far longer than anybody else, um, or a lot of people. Yeah. I've seen the film with a Berlin audience, and I saw it in the States and Tampa, and in both audiences, both Americans and Europeans, they love the movie and completely shocked it was a Canadian story. Do you find that surprising? Do you find that depressing? Do you find that interesting that your film is showcasing this? How 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 does how do you react? To I that? find it uh, it's not shocking. Um, well, actually, no, no, I find it surprising. I don't find it depressing. Um, but I find it interesting. <laughs> so I, I I think that like I'm always blown away by that shit um, because I just have a, a shoebox full of like references. Like I know everything made here. I think like I like to know all the at least the biggies anyway. Um, and it's a kind of a thing that I would always I would get shit for in the states of like because I would do it with actors and musicians and stuff too, or and, and directors where somebody would mention something that's oh they're Canadian, and somebody would say you know what every time I there's an American director. I as an American don't say, well, that guy's American. I was like, yeah, because you come from a country with 300 million people. I come from a country with 30. I come from a country with like a 10th of the population and a, and, and a sort of a 10th of the economy, if that. And so it, 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 it like, of course I know this shit. So I'm always, I assume the rest of the world would too. Um, it's not depressing because that is just, uh, that is the, that is one of the burdens of of sort of Anglo Canadian uh, ism 
is a, is a sort of like chronic anonymity uh, um, out of born of very noble, pure intentions, I believe. I think it comes from a sort of, uh, you know, old stock Scottish sense of propriety and, and not wanting to uh, make a fuss about a bunch of shit. Uh, but it's also, you take that and you, you have it next to the crucible uh, of, of American uh, glorification of literally anything that happened. Anything that happened in the States ends up as a movie or a poster or a t-shirt or a postcard. They, they, they lionize um, their history uh, like no one else, for, for better or worse. And so we don't want to be that, and we, we deem ourselves morally superior to that culture. Therefore, it would be beneath us to launch fireworks and wave flags and all this stuff. Um, however, the, the cost of that is that like the average American, for better or worse, has at least a rough knowledge, rough understanding of certain kind of flashpoints in their history that we just honestly don't. You, you, you have to be, some of us do, but the, if I was to go out on the street, you know, in front of Scotiabank Theater and start to ask people about stuff that I think of as like seminal parts of our, of the Canadian Old Testament, um, I think a lot of them wouldn't know what the fuck I was talking about. And so I'm used to it. It hurts me. And so, but I also understand it. And I know that you can't be Canadian without being undercut by your own self-doubt. That that is our, that is one of our great contributions. You know, like people, the way people talk about Sweden and Swedish cinema, it actually applies more to us, I think. And, and, uh, and so we undercut ourselves, but we undercut ourselves for good, pure reasons. So can we be Canadian without undercutting ourselves? There is that fucking terrible thing that's impossible to, to untangle. So therefore, if people know who I am because of like, you know, uh, a cum shot joke and she's out of my league and now they're looking at me, at least I can use whatever that is. I hesitate to call it currency, but whatever it is, I can use it to kind of like bring to life shit that happened here. I mean, the irony is that our currency is never worth as much as the other currency, but that's yes, a whole correct. Other anyway, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. last, last, last question. I know. Um, we, we again, it came up at the press conference in Berlin. Nobody wanted Matt in this film in terms of the production staff because Matt, um, tends to take a lot of the oxygen up in in his films, and there was a thought that that character, um, wasn't you fought for him to be there. If you could talk about that and talk about specifically what it did to your performance because not only do i think it's your most extraordinary performance but as you are here exuding all this enthusiasm i believe matt allowed you to be much more internal much more closed in because he was there to showcase elements of your craft that you have not been able to exhibit if you could just talk about that as a performer Thanks. and what that was in terms of the process Thanks for saying that, man. Um, it I appreciate that, Jason. It was very, uh, very kind of you. It was it was important to me because a I was a fan of his, and if I'm and and if you're a fan of MJ's cinema, you can't take him out of it, right? Like he he is sort of, um, you know, Ken Finkelman <laughs> or or Stallone, okay, or Branagh, but like you can't like sort of. It is, it's not an MJ movie if MJ is not in it, is my thing, right? Um, this was going to be the one where he did it. And I was basically like, I, I get along with him super well, and I'm a fan of his. And I think that in this particular story, he needed to be there because he's as close to an audience member as we have in, in, our, in our company. You know, even if Mike is... The protagonist and maybe the lead, he is certainly not the audience. He is not, you know, he 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 might be our way in, but he you're not watching the movie through his eyes, you're really watching the movie through Doug's eyes, right? So Doug ends up being this kind of stand-in uh for um or or surrogate uh for and surrogate for the audience and steward of the morals of the movie. And um and he's also just bloody funny. And um, and so when he and I were trying to figure out what my thing was going to be, you know, one of the things we kind of talked about pretty early um, was mitigating all of my kind of crutches and the shit I'm kind of, if I'm known for anything, mitigating that shit. So I'm very effusive 
and, and my my sort of heritage betrays me in my gestures and and I and I make a bunch of fucking faces and I have like trained myself to be a whore for fucking jokes and so I I just like I I had to play defense against all of that and Matt and I thought that the effort me just trying to keep my hands in my pockets would create a new interesting distinct energy me avoiding every instinct I have and playing defense against my instincts would create a whole nother kind of vocabulary for us to use. So part of watching Mike in Blackberry and whatever that is, is, is Jay fighting against all of the shit I've developed as crutches over the 20 plus years of acting. It's, it's trying to find, you know, and, and I think we end up kind of finding a new thing with it. And, um, and it ends up, uh, like you said, MJ occupies the space that I often might. Um, and so now what we have is we have uh, three distinct colors that work together and make a beautiful image, um, but are each doing a different thing. You never want to have two uh, two people doing the same thing in a thing, right? And so, um, so the process of finding that was not uh, without peril and some fucking arguments and... Um, and there were times when, yeah, MJ and I full on would like clash about things, you know. Um, but but I I love and respect him so much, and I know that he would have it no other way than for me to be frank with him. Um, with him, and we were shooting the scene where him and I are practicing my phone call with Jim, right? And he's playing Jim, and. Uh, and I was, I like to try a different thing each take, kind of. I like to do a different thing each take. And I started, and in one of them, I kind of did my, like, I'm on stage at a multicam take. I was just like, you know, nailing, I was swinging at everything. And, you know, and I got some good fucking hits in, man. Like it was, you know, but he came and he was like, no, 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 you're having too much fun with it. And I had to be like, yo, I need to have fun with it. You're going to do 10 takes anyways. If I need one or two to do something crazy, let me. But also, you might need that in the edit. You don't know what the fuck, you know. So so then it's it's the homework we do. It's what we find on the day. And then it's what you find in the edit, right? And and he right away, he kicked everybody off a set, took half an hour to talk with me, understand what I meant by that. I get it completely. And we had this fucking... I, he's a guy that I never had to worry about my delivery in terms of like what I actually felt. I could tell MJ anything the way that I wanted to tell him and he would fucking take it on. Um, so I don't have those conversations with a lot of directors. Um, often the, the, the relationship between director and number one can be fucking contentious and can be, you know, and I'll look after me and you look after you and hopefully we find something good in the middle. But I'm going to, my, my goal is to defend me with MJ our goals were just to make a movie in a special way. And the only way we could do that is if we were brutally fucking honest with one another. And um, and it's the performance of mine I'm most proud of. So I'm, I'm the, the, the process was special. We're, we're proud of you too. I just, can't, I was Thanks. just saying, I'm really disappointed we're not doing this over BBM, but you know. Yeah, you and me both. We'll, we'll, we'll have to do it by Zoom. What a pleasure, my you friend. Um, you, you know how big of a fan I am of yours, but Likewise. how big of a fan I have of this film. Um, enjoy the rest of the day. I know it's going to be crazy. And I guess Jim's actually showing up at the screening tonight, which is, God bless. You know, what a surreal world we live in. <laughs> so, crazy. Yeah. yeah, but thank you so much for the kind words. And you know, the, the feeling is utterly mutual, Jason. Thank you. Um, you've been a, 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 a real um, ally in my career, but also uh, Toronto and uh, Toronto film and Canadian film and Canadian film discussions are better uh, for your participation. So thank you. We'll see each other soon, okay? Thank you, buddy. Take care, man.